I've had such a great day. I don't want to preach today, right? I just want to, I want to end here. I think we've done a good job. I'm going to preach, but I just want to tell you where I am emotionally right now. I want to tell you about a blessing that the Lord has done for me. I turned in, I sent and mailed away my final project for my master's degree, and I am completely done. So it was, it was, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. It, I read about 6,000 pages of textbooks. I wrote about 600 pages of notes. I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours working on this. And I want to tell you about something that happened this week. I got the chance to go to Albuquerque. I'm on the state executive board of our Baptist Convention of New Mexico. Didn't realize what I was signing up for when I signed up for that, but it's, it's a great privilege. And I, was, I, I got to spend some time there. Well, I, my final project was a paper, a, 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 a um, a thesis that I had to write. So I finished the thesis and it had to be printed in a very specific way. So we drove up to Amarillo last weekend and I thought surely Staples or, or somebody would be able to print it. Nobody would print it the way I needed it printed. We called five or six different places. So then I thought I'm going to Albuquerque, bigger town, surely somewhere. We called five or six places and nobody would print this thing. So I'm panicking. I'm thinking, I have to get this done. My deadline is next week. What on earth do I do? So I'm driving from the Baptist Convention of New Mexico headquarters to my hotel. And one thing you probably know about me so far as we've been uh, pastor and, and congregation is that I am so bad with directions. So I get lost in the two and a half miles from one place to the next. <laughs> I am completely lost. I have no idea where I am. I'm driving. I, I know I saw, I saw the sign for the hotel and it was like a mirage in the desert. Like I know it's there, I just can't reach it. So finally I had driven around for about 15 minutes just trying to find where I was. And I said, I'm just gonna pull in, I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna go back where I came from. So I pulled into this, into this uh, parking lot and I just looked up, they had a big colorful sign and it said Print Express. So I said, you know, I have to check it out. Maybe nobody else will print it, maybe they will. I walked in and the guy said, no, we don't print those things. So I said, all right. I started to walk out the door and she said, let me just check in the back. She came out with the exact plastic cover and binding that I needed. She said, we have one of them in the back. It's dusty, we don't do this anymore and we'll go ahead and print it for you. And I sat there and I said, you know what? I don't like that God got me lost in Albuquerque, but I do like that he was never lost. He got me right where I needed to go. And it's just such a blessing to be finally finished. And I gotta tell you what, I think all of us need to be lifelong learners. I'm not talking about going back to school. You say, I'm, I'm 85 years old, I'm not going back to school. It's not about going back to school. It's about learning, reading, growing, and, and just absorbing information. I got to sit down with some pastors this week who have been in one church and one ministry for 25 years, one guy 35 years, and one guy 40 years. And I got to sit down with them. It was like a, a puppy with their master, right? Just sitting there like, teach me. I, wanna, I, wanna, I, I crave that relationship with a teacher or a mentor. I sat and I listened to them. And everything they said, I was just furiously writing. And they said, why are you keeping notes? Because I want to know. I want to cram the experience that you have into my tiny brain. I want, I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to have that kind of legacy. My favorite quote of all time and don't make fun of me for this, but it's this. The more you read, the more things you will know, the more things that you learn, the more places you'll go. And that is Dr. Seuss. But it's the truth. All of us should be striving to learn. None of us should ever settle and say, you know, I'm good. I'm not going to learn anymore for the rest of my life. I, I think we should seek out these opportunities to, to have mentors, to, to learn and to be taught. And there is no better teacher that has ever walked the face of this earth than Jesus Christ. Amen. He was the ultimate teacher. Everywhere he went, he was teaching. Everything that he did, he, he, he used as an object lesson in his teaching. They're walking around and they see a rock. Oh, well, let me teach you about this rock and how it relates to your spiritual life. Jesus taught everywhere. He taught large crowds. He taught individuals. He taught his disciples. He taught his enemies. Everywhere he went, he was teaching, teaching, teaching. So we're going to look at this this morning. I want to look at Jesus as the teacher. All right, we've been in a series called Jesus through the Gospel of John and the life of Jesus. We're going from Christmas to Easter and we're going to show you the whole life of Jesus. We're going to look at Jesus this morning as a teacher. Here's the thing though. I think if people, some people don't even follow Jesus and they know him to be a teacher. Right? You've heard this. Jesus was a good 
teacher. And you may even hear unbelievers say things like, uh, some of his teachings like, turn the other cheek, or love your enemies, or how about the most famous one, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. People know him to be a teacher, but we have this, this kind of danger in that we take Jesus' teachings and we divorce it from Jesus himself. So Jesus wasn't just a, a fortune cookie machine. He wasn't just cranking out good teaching and just saying, Here, here's your teaching, here's your teaching, here's your teaching. We've got to understand who he was when he taught. So the first time that Jesus ever spoke, recorded in scripture, what do you think he said? This is a trick question. I am trying to trick you here. The first thing that Jesus ever said in scripture was, let there be light. It says that in him, all things were made, and without him, nothing was made. So when God himself, when Jesus spoke in creation, listen to this, planets spun into their orbits. Stars burned with radioactive fury at his word. Mountains rose up and worshipped him. Valleys sank. The sea was filled with life. All because Jesus spoke. And then in the New Testament, when you open your Bibles and you see words in red, we have got to understand when Jesus spoke those words, he spoke with the same creativity, power, authority, wonder, and majesty. Every time he spoke, this is not just good little sayings. Oh, do unto others. Oh, how wonderful. I would love to do that. No, he spoke. And when he spoke in creation, the world thundered with the sound of his power and his glory. And when he spoke as, as glory entrapped in human flesh, it has the same power and the same authority. And what that demands from us is obedience. Yes. Obedience. When he spoke to the mountains, rise up and worship me. What did they do? They rose up and they worshipped him. He said to the sea, come to here and no further. And what did they do? They stopped right there. When he said to each animal, be fruitful and multiply and reproduce after your own kind. What did they do? They did exactly what he said. And then he came to man and he said, worship me. And what did we say? We said, no, we said, I would rather worship myself if you don't mind. Right? We're the only creature on earth who has the audacity to look at the God of all creation and say, mm -mm. No. You're right? Have you ever, I, I know you've encountered this with your kids. They, get, they, they develop this snarkiness. It's, 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 not, it's not taught. It's not learned. It's inside them. And, you, and I, I say something to Chloe and she'll say, mm -mm. And it's like, uh, -uh no, it's, it's, I, I told you, you're going to do it. Mm -mm. And it's like, no, you understand this, the consequence. But when Jesus speaks in the New Testament, we see his physical words. We've got to understand that we bow in obedience to these words. And so let's look at this. Let's look at John chapter 7, verse 14 through 18. John chapter 7. I want you to hear this quote before we read. This is from Warren Wearsby. He says this. Jesus is either who he claims to be, or he is a liar. It's a, that's a tough word to say. Jesus is either who he claims to be, or he is a liar. Now let's listen to that, and let's read John chapter 7 together in light of all this. Let's see and give honor to God's word today. John chapter 7, we're going to start at verse 14 and just read a few verses. And I'm reading out of the New International Version today, so it might be slightly different than what you've got, but the words will be on screen if you'd like to follow along. And if you're here this morning and you do not have a Bible, I want, you to tell, I want to tell you this. Take the Bible that's in front of you in the pew. Just take it with you. It's our gift to you. Take it with you. Study it. Learn from it. Bring it back next week. And open it up with us together. That's, that's our goal. It's for all of us to be focused and centered in on God's Word. So John chapter 7 verse 14 says, Not until halfway through the festival did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. The Jews there were amazed and asked, How did this man get such learning without having been taught? And Jesus answered, My teaching is not my own. It comes from the one who sent me. Anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Whoever speaks on their own does so to gain personal glory. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is a man of truth. And there is nothing false 
about. Why don't we take that, digest it for a second, and let me, let me pray. Jesus, you are, you are my teacher right now. I, am, I, have, I have all this experience and, and study behind this, Lord, but it, it means nothing unless I sit at your feet and I learn from my teacher. Jesus, I, I know that you are here where two or three are gathered. You are here in our presence. And I pray, Lord, that you would push me off this stage and you would be our teacher today. I can't explain scripture. You wrote scripture. You teach us. Please, Lord, we ask you in your name to open this up to us. In your, in your name, we ask these things, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. We're going to look at a couple of things today about Jesus' teaching. We're not going to look at what he taught. We're going to look at how he taught. So the first thing you're going to see is this. Jesus teaches God's words. Jesus teaches God's words. Okay, so the first thing we read in uh, verse 14 is not until halfway through the festival. Let me talk a little bit about this festival. This is, we call it the, the festival of booths or the festival of shelters. This is the time around harvest time when the Jews would get together and they would celebrate all the things that God had done for them in the previous year. It was a, a celebration of peace and plenty. It was their Thanksgiving, if we can call it that. So they're celebrating Thanksgiving. This was like a weekend or a week long camping trip. All the Jewish males had to create little tents, little shelters for themselves and sleep outside under the stars for an entire week, just celebrating and remembering all that God had done. Every single day they would march in this big parade line all the way to this pool and the priest would take a silver pitcher and fill up this silver pitcher and then would, they would parade all the way back to the temple and he would pour it out before the presence of the people saying, God has been pouring out his blessings on this is a great festival. I would have loved to have been part of this. It's like Thanksgiving for an entire week and no Black Friday. I, I think that would be the key for me, right? That's the, the key. So a bunch of Jesus' friends and family members say, Jesus, this is your opportunity to go to Jerusalem and start teaching, and you'll have thousands and thousands and thousands of people there to listen to you. You can finally reveal yourself to everyone. And Jesus says, mm -mm. Right? Jesus is the only one who has that, 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 that ability to say mm -mm, and not be sinful, right? So, so Jesus says, no, I know that the, the Pharisees and the religious leaders are trying to kill me. So if I go there publicly, they're going to they're gonna kill me. So what he does is he lets everybody go ahead of him, and then he sneaks into the festival. I love Jesus. He's so interesting. Everything he does, you think, huh, well, that's, that's not what I would have done. And he knows better because he's got his plan. But ever, So the people had come back on their parade route. They had poured out the water before the people, and that's when Jesus stood up to preach or to teach. He caught them off guard, and all of a sudden people are like, hey, who's this? Let's, let's listen. So it doesn't record here what he said. Isn't that kind of unique? You'd think if he said something so important that the people were like, wow, what is he saying? That they would tell us what he said, but that's not the focus of this, of this part right here. They're focusing on how he delivered this message. So what was the people's response here? The Jews were amazed and asked, how did this man get such learning without having been taught? How is he saying these things and he didn't go to college? How, how, how did he do these things and, and, and he, never, he never sat down under our teachers and our elders and our scribes and learned from them. Listen, we see this again in Matthew chapter 7, verse 28. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. When Jesus gets up to speak, I want you to see the difference. Their teachers... They went to college, they went to the schools, they taught under, I mean, they learned under other teachers. And then they went back and they just regurgitated all the information that they were taught. Nothing new was ever said. When you, when you heard someone speak, you could say, I, yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, that too, I've heard that too. Jesus gets up to speak and it's something completely unique. And the people say, we've never heard anything like this. You, you didn't. You didn't learn from us. You didn't study under us. How are you getting these things? And so how does Jesus respond to them? What does he say? These teachings are not my own. I'm not making this up. Where did he get them? From God. From God. He said, I'm teaching God's words. I want you to see what he's really saying here. He's not just saying God sent me an email and, and I, I, I'm reading it out for you guys. This is what he's saying right here. He's saying God's words are my words. 
The words coming out of my mouth, they're God's words. The thoughts that are in my head that I'm thinking are God's thoughts. God's vocabulary is my vocabulary. He's making himself God. He's calling himself God. He's saying, listen, I don't need your human teachers. I don't need your wisdom. I don't need your direction, your guidance. I have everything I need because I am God. This is, this is why we obey, because he speaks God's words to us. This is, this is something we should look at and say, Jesus, what you say, if it comes from God, then I've got to obey it. In verse 15, they say, how, can, how did this man get such learning without having been taught? Literally, what they're saying is, how is he speaking these things when he didn't learn our alphabet? The, the, the word saying, been taught, means letters, actual alphabet. They're saying, you don't know, how, how are you saying these things? And he drops the bomb on them. And he says, I'm not regurgitating the things that have always been said. There's a lot of wise things that have, that have been said, right, in, 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 in life. Uh, from a young age, I learned not to tinkle on an electric fence, right? Those are wise words, you just don't do it. You learn these things. You learn that your mom says, don't touch the stove when it's red, why? Because it's gonna burn you, and how do you learn that? Do you just listen to your mom because your mom is so wonderful and you just listen to everything she says? No, you touch it, and then you say, ah, oh, okay, I learned. Jesus says, I don't need to learn any of these things. That wisdom is, 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 is yours and it's okay, but my wisdom comes from above. And this is what he's trying to tell us here. I want you to see this. Everything that God wants you to know, he put in this book. Everything that God wants you to know, he wrote it to you in this book. So many people are so desperate to hear a word from the Lord, hear a vision, see a vision from the Lord, get some special knowledge from the Lord, right? Everything he lets you know he wrote to you. So many people are so concerned with getting special knowledge that they ignore the knowledge that God already gave. I, I told Willie last week, this in Sunday school, I've studied the Bible almost my entire life and I think I'm only like at 1%, if that. I'm scratching the surface. This book is so unique. God's words are so powerful. Every time I wake up, I look at it and I think, I know I've read this before, but I, I've never really understood this before. So Jesus, our teacher, says this, what I need you to know, I told you. So listen and obey my words. So he teaches God's words. Number two, he teaches God's will. He teaches God's will. Let's read verse 17 together. Jesus says, anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Now, I gotta be honest, when I, when I read this this week and was studying through, I didn't really understand what that meant. What, what is Jesus trying to say? Let me read it again. Anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. This is what he's trying to say. When you obey God's word, you'll understand God's word. You won't understand it if you're not obeying. This is why the Pharisees and the religious leaders never seemed to get it, because they were disobedient to God's word. And so Jesus says, listen, if you want to understand what I'm saying, then obey what I'm saying. Walk with me. Walk with me. Spend time with me. Obey me. Serve me. And you'll understand. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. God's not trying to hide anything from you. If you look at his word and you say, I don't understand this. The Holy Spirit's not looking up there saying, oh, God, he doesn't understand it. He doesn't, he's, he's too dumb to understand, right? That's not what it's about. He wants you to see this. He, he wants you to understand. Matthew Henry said this, and I want you to, to hear this. He said, the ones who really understand Jesus' teachings are the ones who have their hearts melted into the will of God. The ones who understand Jesus' teachings are the ones who have their hearts melted into the will of God. Let me illustrate it this way. So, so a couple weeks ago, we celebrated Chloe's fifth birthday. She wanted a pool party in January. It, we, it took some, some searching, but we found the Days Inn here in town has an indoor pool, and they let us use it for the party. Okay, so Mindy went all out for this cake. It was crazy. It was, it was awesome. Chloe's favorite color is turquoise, so Mindy did turquoise frosting. She put suckers and candy and gumdrops. It was like a five-year-old's dream. But the, the topper on all this was cotton candy. Chloe wanted cotton candy, it's her, it's her favorite. So Mindy put all this cotton candy on the top. We put it in the, in the pool room and they went swimming and everything. We came back to eat the cake and behold, all the cotton candy was gone. For some reason, everybody looked at me. I don't, I don't know why. Everybody looked at me and they say, Pastor Mark, you ate the cotton candy? And I said, 
I did not! I didn't touch the cotton candy. What we hadn't counted on was the humidity in the room from the pool had melted the cotton candy into the cake. Listen, when we ate that cake, it was infused with cotton candy. It was the best thing I had had. And I think, I know Matthew Henry wasn't talking about cotton candy and cake, but this is, this is how I saw this. Matthew Henry says, if you want to understand God's will and God's word, then melt yourself into God. Become one with Him. Stop being so concerned about yourself and about how you understand things and just obey Him. He says, those who really understand God's Word are those who have their hearts melted into the will of God. And so you say to me, Pastor, but the, but the, the Bible is confusing. And I'll agree with you. There are parts that I don't understand. There are questions that I get asked and I say, give me a week, and I'll look it up and answer it, because there's a lot of things I don't understand. I don't even think people who have been in ministry for 50 years know all the answers, and if they do, they're, they're lying to you, right? But this is how we understand God's Word. When we walk with Him, and we obey Him, and we serve Him, listen to 1 Corinthians 2.12. Now we have received the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. God wants you to understand his word, and he sent you the Holy Spirit to be your teacher. That's, that's how, that's how, that's how you, you understand God's word, even the difficult parts. You walk with Jesus, you, you obey him, you serve him, and he will teach you God will, God's will. So Jesus teaches God's words, Jesus teaches God's will, and then the last thing real briefly is this. Jesus teaches God's worth. So words, will, worth. Give verse 18 with me. Whoever speaks on their own does so to gain personal glory. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. Every word that Jesus spoke was for God's glory. That was the goal of his teaching. That was the goal of everything that he did. Every miracle, every teaching, every preaching, every interaction with the person was so that God could get glory. And I've said this before. I'll make a confession to you. It is very easy to teach in my own power and for my own glory. Very easy. I, I, I can be very convincing, and I, and I hate that. I'm, I'm being honest and real with you. And I think a lot of pastors get up in a lot of pulpits on Sunday, never having prayed for their message, never having prayed for the people, and so concerned about what they have to say. i got to tell you, I, I've, I've rehearsed sermons throughout some weeks, and been so confident, you could, oh man, you just, you should have seen me. Oh, this is going to be beautiful. These people are going to, they're going to love this. And then I get up here and I drop a giant stinker right on stage, right? I drop an egg, lay an egg. And everybody says, oh, did he even go through that sermon? And I say, well, in the times when I'm in my own power and for my own glory, it's going to fail miserably. And Jesus says, when you speak for God's glory, that's the man of truth. That's, that's somebody who's not a liar. Remember what Warren Wearsby said, Jesus is either who he said he is, or he's a liar. And Jesus says right here, in front of everybody, I'm not a liar. I'm speaking for God's glory. This is our goal as a church. This is why we meet. This is why we do anything in this church, so that the name of Jesus would be lifted high and the Lord would be praised and glorified. This is the end of all this. I, I don't teach you these things so that you cram your heads with knowledge. I don't teach you these things so that we can be better people, so that we can go out in the community and just be the, the, the darn tootinest best Christians that you'll ever see. That's not why we do this. We do it for God's glory. At the end of all days, I want to bow before my king and say, I did everything for your glory. I messed up a lot. And, and, and it, was, it was bad. But, there, but, but the focus of my life and the focus of our church was that God's name would be glorified. That's why we do what we do. And so Jesus, when he teaches, he teaches God's word, and that demands our obedience. He teaches God's will, which teaches us how to be obedient. And he teaches us God's worth, which is the goal of our obedience. That's what Jesus' teachings are, are about. They push us closer to God. They, they, they melt our hearts into the will of God. They, they push us toward God. They instruct us about God. The world is never really going to understand Jesus' teachings. They may take bits and pieces. They may take little bits and say, uh, do unto others what you would have them do unto you and, and love your enemies and all this. But they're not going to understand Jesus' teachings until they start a relationship with Jesus. That's what it's about. It's not about learning and memorizing all his teachings. It's about walking with the teacher. 
and sitting at his feet and learning from him. My goal for you guys today and, and my, my only purpose, we're not going to have a time of invitation. I just want to end with a word of prayer. I want you to do something for me. Take your Bible and open it. This week, seven times. Come back next Sunday morning, having opened your Bible seven times. I don't care if you read one verse. It's not about reading the whole Bible. You can't do that. If you do, you're not going to remember anything. Read something this week. Sit with Jesus. Open up. Open up. Flip through until you find some words in red. And spend some time with Jesus as your teacher. Listen to him. Sit and listen and say, Lord, how, how can I obey what, what you've given me and what you've taught me today? That's my challenge for you guys. And if you come back next week and say, I spent time with Jesus and I don't understand what it, his word is. And I'm not sure I really know Jesus then that's our opportunity to have a conversation about what it means to know Jesus as your Savior. Let me pray for you and bless you guys, and then we'll be dismissed. Father God, I love you so much, Lord. I am so grateful. My heart is pumping so hard. I am bursting with love and joy in, in your presence and in your name today. Lord, I love this church. I love these people, and I pray with all my heart that we would look at your words that you taught us and that we would be committed to them. Not as nice little quippy sayings, but as words that have the power to change our hearts. The word of God is swift and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing even to asunder uh, to the soul and spirit, the bone and the marrow. You cut us deeply with your word and you heal us with that same word. I pray, Lord, that we would, we would dig in this week, dive in this week. I thank you for every person here, and I pray a special blessing for them, that they would know you as their Savior. If they don't know you, that they would not spend one night, Lord, until they, they come back and, and have to make things right and, 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 and come to you as the only source of our salvation and our hope and our joy. I love you, Lord, as, as, as my teacher. I want to sit at your feet. I'm not good at it, Lord. I'm, I'm prideful and I'm stubborn, and I pray that you would melt my heart into your will this week. Lord, it's for your glory, everything that we do. I pray that this community would see glory radiating out of this church. That they would, they, they would recognize that we've spent time with you because our faces show it. Our attitudes show it. Our actions and decisions show it, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And it's all for you and the son that you gave to us lifted up on the cross. In your name, amen. amen.